regularly the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Adjustment. The board was created by the city charter to, to hear applications for variances from the zoning ordinance requirements and to hear and render decisions on interpretations of the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The board consists of five voting members. It requires four affirmative votes for approval of any variance or interpretation. All cases on the agenda will be heard in the order listed. The order of proceeding for each case shall be as follows. A, city staff will make a brief presentation outlining the application. B, the applicant shall present their case. C, persons in favor of the variance shall present their evidence. D, persons opposed to the variance shall present their evidence. E, the applicant shall be given a rebuttal period. D, the public hearing will be closed and no further testimony will be accepted. <clears throat> the normal procedure is that the board will discuss and take action on the application. All meetings of the board are open to the public. Anyone in the audience who thinks that for any reason they will speak before the board tonight, please stand. <coughs> and take the oath. If you, if you think you're gonna speak, please stand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in all matters pertaining to the cases before the Board of Adjustment? Say, I do. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. I'll call the roll. Jack Lehman. Here. Sarah Wimberly. Here. John Davies. John Oster. Here. And I'm Roy Brown. I'm here. Okay, our first and I guess only case tonight is case number 22-999-12, a variance to the commercial fencing standards for 17501 Hidden Valley Road. So, you ready for <clears throat> Yes, this is an application by the Hidden Valley Animal Hospital to install a uh, six-foot privacy fence, a wooden cedar privacy fence on the west side of their property there on Hidden Valley Road. <clears throat> this slide shows the location of the property in relationship to 291 and Hidden Valley Road. It's on the southeast corner. <clears throat> this is the zoning of the property. You can see there's on C2 with property to the east is zoned R18 multifamily. Uh, the property to the north, which contains a church, is zoned R6. Property to the uh, west is C2 also, and then uh, basically to the south is the 291. <clears throat> this is the aerial photograph. Uh, that The church is their property here. <laughs> the church. The, uh, <clears throat> the hospital's property is shown. Uh, you can see to the east. Uh, there is a, a cul-de-sac with, uh, I believe those are duplexes. And then to the north is uh, a church. To the northeast is a, uh, <clears throat> I think that's a threeplex or something. And then you have uh, the uh, country club uh, homes or whatever it is to the further, to the northeast. Across uh, 291, there is the, uh <clears throat> there is the, uh, um, Credit Union, and then to the northwest is a, a strip center. <clears throat> this is an aerial photograph that shows the approximate location of where they want to put the uh, the uh, uh, fencing. It extends from the front door portion of the, you'll see here in a minute, uh, and then to the north property line along the north, well, south of the north property line, then east, and then south again, and then over, and then up to the area in the south there. This is the front of the of the building itself as it faces 291 Highway. This is the driveway. There's a parking area on both sides of this uh, of the building here. Uh, here we're uh, looking southwest from the north side of the lot. Uh, this is the north parking lot. There's the building. You can see the driveway winds around to the winds around to the right. <clears throat> okay, this is the area they want to place the fence. 
Uh, the red line there is not exactly accurate, but it shows the, uh, this is a, uh, I don't know, you, you wouldn't call it a manhole exactly, but it's a, a place where the utilities are, are located under that panel. They want to make, make sure that they want to stay behind that actually. And that is about 16 feet or so south of the sidewalk. They've actually done some uh, dirt work on the left there to, to prepare for the, to level this ground out to install the fence. Here's another a photo of the same area. Again, some dirt added to the uh, area showing the, uh, uh, the, some of the area that will be sort of leveled out to, to allow the animals to play. Let me go back to this one picture here. The door that you see there that's just in the middle or just above that red car there, that's the door that they wanted to use to bring some of the animals out into that fenced area. <clears throat> okay, this is as we look to the to the east. Um, there's a uh, row of trees and brush and all that between the animal hospital and then the uh, houses to the uh, east. Here we're on the south of the property, looking north, <clears throat> up the hill towards a uh, uh, Hidden Valley Road. This is the area that they want to place the the, uh, the fence enclosure. It will come down the hill on your right next to the tree line there and then go back to the west and eventually enclose that area where you see uh, what looks next to a garage. There's a doorway there on the left, which the animals will also come out there with their... Yes, that is correct. Uh, I don't want to say where the uh, shadow ends, but in that general area. Oops, wrong way. <clears throat> and this is the, uh, uh, as we look to the west, this is the credit union across the street or across 291 Highway. <clears throat> this is the church on the north side of uh, Hidden Valley Road. There is a home there uh, that's also north of Hidden Valley Road. And uh, uh, that's all my presentation. Any uh, questions of staff? If, if they brought the fence, how did that would be? Uh, what would be? If they brought the uh, the fence across to the to the east from the the building line. They wouldn't even be here, is that right? That's right. As long as they didn't uh, extend past the front of the building, that okay. that's correct. So it, it would be at a, at a parallel to the street? Well, somewhat. Yeah, yeah, because it, of the curve in Hidden Valley sure, Road. Sure, that, that's what I mean. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. Please state your name and your address. Hi, first I would like to thank you guys for having me. My name is Madeline Warren. I am the um, hospital manager at Hidden Valley Animal Hospital. Um, we are located, are you wanting my personal address or Hidden Valley's address? It doesn't Both? matter. Okay, we are located at 17501 Hidden Valley Road, Independence, Missouri, 64057. Um, today we are asking for a variance in the city's code for both the height of the fence and the material of the fence um, because dogs can jump a three-foot fence and for the safety of our patients as well as the community of independence um, a privacy fence a cedar privacy fence would be a lot more manageable for us and the safety of everyone. Okay, I'd just like to clear up. Actually, your, we're, the variance r relates to the location of the fence, not the height or the uh, materials. 
because okay. uh, it's in front of the building line, not not that it's wood or it, or it's height. Right. Okay. So can you explain to us why um, you want to extend a little bit towards the, f the the north, the front of your property, instead of lining up with the building? Um, so my original plan was, I'm just going to be very transparent, it was to line up on the other side of the building. I met with six different contractors, found one I really liked and was going to do it, and my landlord um, has other plans for that side of the building. Um, and so we made a compromise, and he told me that this is the space that I can do it. And as a business we have to have safety for our animals with 291 right there. Um, not just for our patients, but for the motorists. Um, that would not be a good situation if a dog got off the leash. And I mean, there's some powerful, strong dogs out there for sure. Yeah, originally their plan was to uh, actually uh, place, the build, place the fenced area behind the building, south of the building. And then her landlord said, no, that won't work because we may expand and put another building there or something. So that's why it was moved to the east side. Or you might want to expand the parking because you've got a something. parking issue. A hundred percent. That's what I've asked um, for him to do in our lease agreement. The parking lot is up to him and I'm wanting him to expand the parking lot, but he has other plans for it. Okay. Which so basically... <laughs> Do the dogs need a certain amount of area to be to, to be safe? Or? So the reason I'm wanting it to wrap around both areas is because how this building is built in the basement is our grooming area and our large dog boarding. And then upstairs is where our small dog boarding is. So that upstairs um, door... All the small dogs will be enclosed, that basement door, our large dog boarding, and then even our grooming clients will be able to then use that safe space. So are you saying that because uh, you have to move the fence to the north because the landlord has plans for that area, that you need a certain amount of space for the dogs outside yes. and that's why you need to encroach past the normal yes. code setback of yes. fences. Yes, correct. And so, okay. Any other, any other questions? How will this affect your day-to-day -day operation if you don't get that large? Um, so it will actually really, really help um, our day-to-day -day operation. So at the moment, because of not having a fence, my team is having to take one dog out at a time, double leashed up, um, and there's no other option. If we get this fence, we'll be able to be a competitor with boarding prices. Um, we are 70% less cost-wise to board with us, but it's because we don't have a safe outdoor space and I won't feel comfortable increasing our prices and be a competitor. Um, and so that'll allow me to hire more staff, which will allow the dogs to have more outdoor time versus just one boarding team member opening, one boarding team member closing. I'll be able to afford having a middleman that will be able to take the dogs out with us or with the other person. Well, to back to my original question, you know, if you wouldn't even be coming here if you made the fence nope. right from the, what would that do if, if you had, if this was not approved and you had to use that smaller space? If this is not approved today, I don't see us being able to get a fence with the number of times my landlord and I have compromised, tried to compromise. Okay, thank you. Is that because you won't have you won't have enough room? We won't have enough dogs? room, um, and he won't allow any other option, um, which would be pretty detrimental for our business right now. I see.
part of our job task is to um, look at the review criteria, which you've answered very well in your application. Thank you. And um, we have to um, basically create uh, good arguments okay. uh, if we're going to go against the, uh, the standard and, and create a variance. So um, one of the, looking at the staff's comments, um, number one, <clears throat> the requested variance arises from conditions that are unique to the subject property that are not ordinarily found in the same zoning district and that are not a result of the owner's intentional action. Basically, you're saying that <clears throat> um, there are some unique conditions because the dogs need a certain amount of space and your, your landlord, uh, for you to operate your business successfully and to keep your landlord uh, satisfied, you have to do this is what you're telling me. A hundred percent. We have dogs that will not use the restroom on the leash. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And so the cleanup time inside is ridiculous. And I feel so sad for my team that has to do it. And then for myself when I'm having to cover their shifts. Um, the cleanup time inside <laughs> would be so much better. <laughs> to let some dogs off the leash so they'll actually use the restroom. I assume that's why <clears throat> those of us who have been into your establishment have noticed a, a little bit of a aroma in the basement when we've gone in there. A hundred percent. I would love to invite each of you to come. I've been the manager for four months now and I can breathe and talk in the basement now, but this will help as well. It would probably make your landlord happier too if there's not a nasty smell. I mean, 100%. it would probably make your business relationship maybe a little bit better. They don't tend to like things like that even if it's their fault, you know? Yeah, the moisture yeah. from having to clean everything. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so, well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this last one here. Um, uh, number five, the alleged hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. And the, the hardship was, how, how did you answer that? Let's see. You said that the current code, oh, this is about the height. The, so um, we, basically we need to answer that question. What would be your argument right now on that um, regarding the location of the fence, not the height? The location of the fence, what was the, can you repeat the question? Just how would it affect, what, could you just repeat the question? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, all right. So. Basically, um, the hardship was not created by you. It's created by unique circumstances of yes. you, the nature of your business. The dogs need to go outside, all these kinds of things that you've mentioned. So really, it's not something you created. It's just something that's, that's occurred that needs to be solved. Is that what? A hundred percent. You can go to any other animal clinic, animal hospital. They have a fenced outdoor okay. space. Um, and that was mm. not my decision when I... Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, anybody have any questions? John? Yeah. Yeah. One question is, uh, if you look at the code, it allows you to go beeline straight from the corner of your property to your corner of your building. So, if concerned about approving it. I feel like a marginal change in the 
profile may be a reasonable compromise, if that's a concern. About co her compromising any Right, any so it's, it's a marginal shrink of what you're asking for, but it, 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 you know, if you, if you come up here, I can show you where it's just, if you went from here to here, that's technically allowed in the code. Like, that's, that's the example that it gives, basically. So you would be this. And so the only technical part that you wouldn't be in compliance with would be the little part between the door and the corner, which I think is a very marginal thing that would definitely be a non-issue. But I don't know if that's enough land for you yeah. to deal with. Yeah, You're, you've already worked it out with the, with the uh, landlord, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Any other comments or questions? From a, from a city, I think from a city flow standpoint too, because of where Hidden Valley is located, you know, should they, a lot of people in this town have big dogs, and should a dog get loose and get hit in the head, that's gonna cause a lot of bad things, not to mention the poor dog. Uh, again, I think it's a, a proactive the, move. Okay. The city of Independence has over 2,000 accidents a year. Um, and I don't want one of those to be coming from Hidden Valley Animal Hospital. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Does anybody else wish to speak in favor of, of this? Please state your name and your address, please. My name is Marie Fitz. I am with Terra Firma Landscaping, and my address is 525 Southwest. Would you Southwest. Uh, move a little bit cl closer to the mic, please? My address is 525 Southwest Brome Drive in Grain Valley, Missouri. Okay. So what I brought this evening is actually, I know that you all had the general <clears throat> layout of everything, but I believe in that whole picture is worth a thousand words to do a true mock-up of what we were proposing what we are proposing so um, and I can certainly give this up to you all if you would like but primarily as uh, Madeline pointed out on this side of the building where the exit is for um, the animals and then down below down on this side where the exit is for the animals that was the purpose of trying to do the complete enclosure along with just kind of creating and flattening out a lot of that area, which um, we'll, we're also planning on doing some nice grass in there once we have it somewhat more leveled out and kind of lose a little bit of the sloping that is going on inside of there. But overall, this little cutout here is basically where that um, utility access that is actually on the ground is at so that that would remain to the outside rather than enclosing it with a gate. We felt like it would be better to, to just kind of do a little jog around it so that there would never be any question about city access toward the utilities at all. Is there, is there a gate in the fence somewhere? There, there are a couple of gates actually okay. on the fence, um, both down on this end there's, because there's a, actually a little curbing right there to get access into this storage building. And so we're putting a double gate in down on this side. And then um, by, <coughs> excuse me, when you come out the door here because of the sidewalk that is there for access into the space, we were planning on putting a single man gate right in there as well. So that there, again, accessibility. And in terms of um, the overall lines we've we've come in off of the tree line again um, there's a, actually like an apron drive driveway apron on this side of the property um, across hidden valley that um, that is part of what the landlord is wanting to, to maintain and keep clear so when we came down with this line part of the purpose of that um, being at an angle was because the property line follows that same angle and we have a pinch point down here at the base and he wanted us to be able to maintain about 10 feet of space off for accessibility back in and behind not only for whatever plans he has in the future but um, part of what I was looking at in terms of designing that out was to ensure that proper maintenance and lawn care and tree care back there would not be compromised 
at all so that the facility as a whole can maintain a nice clean look. Okay. Any questions? Would you all like this up there or? I, I wasn't sure if you'd be uh, able to see it. Good, I think. Oh, right. I just wanted to okay. make sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Does anybody else wish to speak in favor of this uh, variance? D does anybody wish to speak in opposition to this variance? Okay. Uh, do you have anything else to add to your testimony? No. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, close the public hearing and we'll take it up here. So. What do you guys think? I think she's uh, answered the criteria that we have to follow, and I think that it's, I know it's a, it's a good business. Um, they not only take care of dogs, they take care of cats, <laughs> long-haired cats that need to be shaved once uh -huh. a while. <laughs> so. Um, I would uh, request that the applicant understand that we're talking the fence is going to be 18 feet back from the sidewalk. That's what's in the staff report. That's why I discussed with her. So later we don't have an issue of the location of the fence. It's not gonna go up to two or three. Yeah. yeah. That's what was in the staff report. Okay. Behind the sidewalk. Yep. Okay, just wanna make sure we're all on the same page with that. Because that's the area of where that uh, that utility boxes, and so so the fence will is not going as far to the north as she showed in her drawing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah that, I just that's why I wanted to make it clear where uh, where I understood because I had met with the applicant, Miss Warren, out at the property when when I was out there, and okay, he talked about didn't want the, the fence would basically be behind this utility box. Okay. And just stepping it off instead of going from the property line, which is probably a foot or two behind the sidewalk, just go from a known point, which is the sidewalk. And, so and the said, fence will be parallel to the street. Correct. Okay. So, uh, any more discussion up here? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, I, I think that there might have been a little miscommunication. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. The the point of having the cutout set back, so this was running parallel with the sidewalk, dropping back so that the access panel was still to the outside, so that we were able to gain that little extra space up toward. It was going to, the plan was for this fence line running along um, Hidden Valley to be approximately six feet back from the inside edge of that sidewalk and then that cut in so that that little L was designed so that the access box would still be to the exterior if that isn't a problem. You're saying you're basically not moving the fence back. You're just going to put a, a cut out in the fence. Well, is it, is Do you it, want to come up here and show us? Yes, sir. You guys? It was in this photo. So in this fence line running along here, of course, the idea was for that to be approximately five feet back off of the sidewalk line. And that by coming back in and just doing a little L there, that we were keeping that access panel still completely to the front. And it just gave us more room back in there. But you don't, you don't show that parallel to the sidewalk. I that it is, when it's built, it will be parallel. When I actually turn in the permit plan set and the specs, I was just trying to give you all a, a pretty, pretty close mock up of what we were planning. So you're going to you're going to come from here, straight across to this other corner. You're going to parallel the sidewalk, and 
You can see it parallel on that one. Well, it still is an angle there, oh. see? It, it does have a slight angle. Right? So I think it's, uh, it, it, I think we need to make sure it, whoever makes a motion that that the fence does parallel the, the okay. okay, I, I do want to point out one thing that uh, why this, I did not have this comment that I got from our traffic person in the staff report because I thought we were going to put it a certain distance all the way back from the sidewalk. The traffic engineer says the fencing at the east corner of the property will need to be at least seven feet from the sidewalk and also at least eight feet from the sidewalk on the west corner to eliminate any additional sight distance impacts. So if the board did decide to follow this, their design, uh, again, it'd be seven feet on the northeast corner and then eight feet on the northwest corner. So if we require that the sidewalk, that the fence parallel the sidewalk eight feet, that would cover everything. Uh, that's right, at least eight, you could say at least eight feet behind the sidewalk. Eight feet. No closer than eight feet. That's right. Very good, everybody understand that? Okay. Um, Any other questions for me, sir? I just you. wanted to make sure that we I clarified we're, that point. We, we're clear now. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's so. What you were about instead of having the gate there. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you need a motion? Yeah, we need a motion. If somebody want to make a motion? Be sure that we clarify that it will be no closer than eight feet, and it will be uh, parallel to the sidewalk. I move that we approve this fence at Hidden Valley Pet Hospital. Case number. Excuse me, Animal Hospital. Case number 2299912. Variance for commercial fencing standards for 17501 Hidden Valley Road. We approve the fence with the provision that it be parallel to the sidewalk and eight feet from the sidewalk. No closer than eight feet. Then, and no closer than eight feet. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Um, so, um, everybody understand? All right. So, I'll take the roll. Jack Lehman? I vote yes. Sarah Wimberly? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, John, uh, other John? Yes. And, and I too will vote yes. So uh, case number 22-999-12 has passed with the stipulation uh, in the motion. So thank you thank for you. coming. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Happy okay. poop scooping. I can't <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I cannot imagine. Are we, is there any I other business? Okay. Yes, we have uh, the actually there's uh, there's the oh, approval of the minutes yeah, from the have, July good, thank you. from the July meeting. Okay. And then after that we have uh, the election of officers because it's been quite a while since we've had that, and then the discussion of two new members, potential new members, which okay. has been provided here. If you recall, uh, about four months ago, uh, the board did vote to recommend that Mr. Brown and Mr. Davies be full-time members instead of alternates. Right. These uh, two uh, resumes that I left here are, would be for the uh, two alternate positions. Uh, Mr. Uh, Oster is uh, moving to Colorado in the n next month or so, so he will not be on the board any longer. So we will have openings for two alternates and then that's what these are for. Okay. But we can start out with the minutes from okay, July. So, uh, has everyone had a chance to uh, review the minutes? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion we approve the minutes as presented for October the 20th. Or, no. July, we don't July need a 21. For that, do we? No. What was that? We don't need a motion to approve the minutes, do we? You, you could actually just approve them uh, okay, by. So, uh, uh, we approve. By okay. Approve just by, here, okay. affirmative. All in, in favor of approving the minutes, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, so the minutes have been approved. And now, um, 
We have the election of officers election next of officers, on the agenda. So, um, I guess we uh, need to open it up. Uh, we need, yeah, need a chairman and a vice chairman both. I'll make a motion that we elect, um, nominate, no, you nominate the, somebody. Nominate Roy Brown for the position of chairman. Any other nominations for chairman? It's going to be a tight race. Um, okay, so uh, I guess I don't vote, so, or do I? Uh, you, uh, vote for yourself, for crying out loud. Uh, you don't have to vote We're if you don't We're supposed to love ourselves, right? So we That's can love right. others? Okay. Yeah, best to abstain. Uh, all in favor of... of uh, Roy Brown being chairman, uh, please raise your hand. <laughs> Opposed? You. Okay, so. Uh, I, I just put 4-0 on that. that. Okay, then we have vice chairman. Now, uh, we need a uh, motion for vice. No, no, nomination. Nom <laughs> nomination for vice uh, chairman. All eight hours each All way. Eight hours each way, yes. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'm not going to jack. I'll second it. He's giggling. I guess. <laughs> we try not to do okay. it. Okay. 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 I'll do it. Any other? These are two applicants from the, uh, the, you know, people apply for boards and commissions through the city clerk's office, and when we get some new applications, uh, she provides those to us because she knows that we have vacancies. So these are two actual um, uh, applicants that have requested to be on the board, and uh, if you look at their resume and see if you feel that uh, they would be qualified to be on the board, uh, this uh, Anthony Sommer, Says he has some, I have an interest in and familiar with zoning and how it affects our city. So it uh, sounds like he uh, may be good for this board. And then uh, we have uh, Cody Atkinson who has provided his uh, complete resume. I guess he was in the military at one time. And this is impressive. So they look like they could be good candidates. And if the board feels they would be, just just say they would uh Board would recommend they be appointed, and then we can go from there. Much like we did about uh, three or four months ago. Okay, so, so we have, we don't all have. Yeah, you should. This yeah. one's got it. You've got one that's two pages and basically blank, and then the other one that's like five oh. pages. Yeah. Dude, I don't know if it matters, because I don't know that I told you I thought, they were mistaken when they suggested me at first because I didn't know anything about it. Do we know anything? I mean, Anthony Summer, or do you not have? I, I don't know either one of the people. Okay. Well, the other, uh, the other gentleman certainly has a an impressive. Is it Cody? Y yes. Uh, my only concern is uh, he's really active in politics, and we really don't have any better sure sure in politics. In right. Uh, I, I wouldn't think so. This board's pretty straightforward to what they do. There's not a lot of uh, discussion on policy type issues, so I wouldn't think that would be an issue. I mean, it never has been before. So what do we do? We say we're okay, we don't have any objections, or what? 
Yeah, I guess you could uh, make a motion to recommend both these people be appointed and then uh, um, vote on it like that. And these are alternates also. Yeah. yeah. So they're not going to always be on it. Right. Might also get on it and then decide it's not for them, but there's not a whole lot of people chomping at the bit to get on right. today. Mm -hmm. And a minimalist might make quicker meetings, too. <laughs> That's true, too, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, does anybody want to make a motion that we, uh, we pass this on to the... Final motion. This goes to the council, doesn't it, then? Yes. Uh, a motion to... Recommend oh, these applicants, it. applicants to the council. Okay. Uh, do I have a uh, second? Second to the motion. I will. Second. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded that these two uh, gentlemen be uh, recommended to the council for their consideration. Uh, all in favor? Uh, raise your hand. Right hand. Uh, any opposition? Okay. So looks like they're in for the council. Anything else, sir? Okay. That's it. Well, um, Dr. Dr. Uh, Hart has, has kind of indicated that he is still somewhat on the board, but he's not really that interested in coming to meetings anymore. He actually wants to believe he wants to be on the health board and he's working with trying to get on that board, but I'm not sure where that's where that's going. And how about Karen Foster? Oh, yeah, he's still on the board. He's just not here tonight. Well, yeah, I know. I know he's not here. Uh, well, yeah, he still wants to be on the board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've not heard any. We have three alternates. All We can have up to three alternates, and right now Mr. Oster is the only alternate. Yeah. It's seven thirteen, okay.